for just a little while, and I'm not going to hold you too long, I hope. But I want to talk to you on a simple thought. Feel the trench. Feel the trench. Now, we notice that the man of God here made a bold statement to them. He said, you got 400 prophets out here, and I'm the only one of God's prophets. Now, Elijah knew that he wasn't the only prophet left, but he was the only one there at that time. And he knew that his decision that day to go against 400 of their prophets was the only way that he could make them to understand that there wasn't but one true and living God. I looked at this and, uh, as I was studying and I as God began to open some things up to me I thought about how much this resembles America today. I've never seen a time today when the church, number one, is so outnumbered. I've never seen a time today when iniquity abounds like it does. But I want you to notice here uh, what the man of God uh, instructed them to do and I and, and, and uh, uh, then I want you to try to apply that to a Christian and what we need to do today I noticed the first thing he told them was to come near or to move in close why did he say that he said I want you to come close to me but I want you to see that they ain't no smoking mirrors. This ain't nothing. Uh, I'm not doing anything uh, uh, that I want you to see for yourself that what's done here today will be done of God and not of me. Amen. I believe if there's ever been a time when America, number one, <laughs> needs to lean in close to the man of God and listen to the word of God that's preached today. We need it more than we ever have in this day that we're living in today. Amen. Listen, I'm not here saying I'm the only one, but I'm here to say that there's not many of us. There's not many that are still preaching the word of God today. But those that are, their congregations need to lean in and listen. They need to hear what God is saying to them in this time that we're living in today. Amen. I believe that we're living in the last time. I believe uh, that if God doesn't, uh, uh, if the Lord doesn't split the eastern sky, Today, uh, hey, I'm looking for him tomorrow. I believe it's that close. But I believe that the biggest need in America today is we need not just to come in to the house of God and sit on a pew and, uh, well, preacher, he preached a good message and half of you couldn't even tell me what I preached at the end of the message. I've had people come up to me and say, Preacher, that's a good message. And I started to say, well, what did you really like about it? <laughs> Most of them probably couldn't even told me because it went right over the head. I would even say that most folks that go to church today that sit under a preacher somewhere, if you ask them tomorrow night what their preacher preached about, most of them couldn't even tell you. You say, preacher, that's a hard statement. I guarantee you it's true. 
I look back across this congregation sometimes, and some of you are yawning. Some of you done went plumb out. <laughs> Nodded off to sleep. Others sit there looking like, would you hurry up and get through so we can go home? And then there's a few that I look back and I believe are soaking it in. We need to lean in. Amen. Amen. We need, listen, you need to hear the word of God. In Sunday school class, you don't need to just read read the lesson and, and, and go home and forget about it. You need to listen to what's being said in Sunday school. That's how we grow. It's by learning the word of God. But he told them, come to it. All right, I got to hurry up. I'll be here till night. Y'all still be here at four o'clock. <laughs> the next thing that he did was he built an altar. Mm -hmm. He tore down that old broken up altar. You say, preacher, why did he tear the altar down? Because that altar had been used to uh, offer sacrifices to a false god. Amen. He didn't want nothing that pertained to a false god anywhere around him. Amen. So he tore it down. Uh -huh. We need to tear down these altars that we've been using. And we need to get an altar somewhere. We need to build us one somewhere uh, that we can get in and stay in until we get in touch with God. Amen. Amen. I see people come to the altar and they'll get up here and they'll squall them crocodile tears, get up and go right back to the same way they live it. They wasn't sincere to start with. They need to find them a real altar somewhere. Amen. Listen, an altar's not a bench. Amen. An altar is a change of heart. Uh, it's a place where you get down on your face and you talk to a living God that's listening to your prayer and you pour your heart out to Him. Amen. So he just tore that thing down. Then he went and he got him 12 stones. Now I want you to notice some things he done here because it's important that we see. See, he said he done this according to the word of God, how God had instructed him to do. See, that was the first thing. Amen. All right. So he tore that altar down. Then he went and he chose twelve stones. What was he saying? by choosing 12 stones. One for each tribe. He was saying this. I want you to understand that God is a God of all Israel. Not just part of you. Not just the ones that have been serving him. But he wants you all to come back to him. Let me go farther than that to say this. God is a God that wants all nations to come to him. Not just part of them. Not just the ones that we think ought to come or the ones we want to come. See, we want to pick and choose. Even when we send missionaries, we'll send them here, we'll send them there, we'll send them. Listen, it's about getting the message to all the world. If there's ever been a time that we need to take down the the racist barrier, it's a day we're living in today. Amen. We need to take it down. So maybe sitting there saying, "Oh Lord, <laughs> this mess we're seeing on television—that ain't of God." Amen. God loves every. Nationality. Amen. See, he created them just like he did me and you. He didn't just create white folks. He created black folks. He created red folks. He created uh, uh, all colors, all creeds. He created every one of them. And he loves them just as much as he does white America. Amen. 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 
Some of y'all don't like this, do you? But it's the truth. We set up in our little white churches. You hear what I'm fixing to tell you. And somebody's, somebody's been listening to my radio broadcast may turn me off after this. We set up in our little white churches and if a black comes in, it just, uh, hey, we go all to pieces. Let me tell you something. I wish we could fill this house with every color under the sun. It don't matter to me. I just wish God's house would be filled. Amen. I want to see them saved by the grace of God. And it don't matter who they are or where they come from. Amen. Hey, listen, uh, we, uh, we lambast the gays. Hey, I wish we had a house full of them tomorrow. Why? Right, because they ain't going to get saved unless we get them under the word of God. Right. I wish we could get them in here where they can hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Now am I going to change my way of preaching? No sir, not for you, your kids or nobody else. Amen. Amen. I'll preach it gun barrel straight as long as God gives it to me, but I'd like to have a good audience to preach it to. Amen. Amen. So God's a God, uh, God's a God that loves all creation. You know, some of this is hard, isn't it? Because of the way we've been raised, it's hard to get away from your raising sometimes. <coughs> you telling me my mom and daddy raised me wrong? Probably so. In a lot of cases, right. I'm telling you that if it don't mount up, if, if what we teach in our children doesn't mount up to what this blessed book says, we're teaching them wrong. Amen. This is what we need to be teaching by. This is what we need to be preaching by. This is what we need to be living our lives by. And if America will come back to the Word of God, brother, we'll be all right. Amen. And until we do, we won't. All right. Then I want you to notice he put the wood on the altar next. Why did he put the wood there? Fire was going to come down. Man, why did he need the wood? He needed a little kindling there. <laughs> We need, he's going to help God. He's going to give him a little kindling to help him with it. Or God was, wanted some kindling there. I don't know why God wanted it there because he didn't need it, but he, he instructed Elijah to put it there. Right. What are you saying, preacher? We need some kindling in our churches today. We need some folks that are on fire for God. Some folks with a burning desire to serve God, to worship God. We need some folks that will get up and shout a little bit. We need some folks that, hey, that will let the Holy Ghost of God take charge of their lives. We need some folks to get out of their thought for a while and get in God's thought for a while. We need some folks on fire for God. That's what we need more than anything else in America today. Amen. We need some fire starters. Yeah. You know, and, and most of the churches growing up, we had some fire starters. I remember at Grace Chapel when I was uh, little and growing up, we had four or five women in that church Women, you wonder where your place is. Some of y'all need to be fire starters. <laughs> we had some women in that church that were fire starters. Yeah. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about <coughs> women that love God above everything else. Yeah. And brother, you get the singing next thing you know, one of them would jump out uh, up a shouting over there. One of them over yonder would go to shouting. And the, the house would break out in a shout. And I'm telling you what's the truth. Next thing, the altars began to fill up. We had more services where the preacher didn't preach than we did where he did. Why? Because those fire starters got something moving in that church. Amen. Amen. 
We need some fire starters. Now, I ain't talking about somebody to get up and do something on their own. I'm talking about folks that will let the blessed Holy Ghost Amen. of God rule their lives. Amen. In church and out of church. Amen. The reason they could start fires on Sunday morning was because of the way they lived on Monday. Amen. 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 They love God and didn't care who knowed it. If you wouldn't talk to them, you're going to hear about their blessed Savior. Amen. Now we talk politics, football, and everything else. How many, the only time God brought up is if somebody haphazardly brings him up in the conversation. He ought to be the first thing brought up. Amen. Amen. Alright, so we need some fire starters. He put that wood on the altar. He was careful when he got that wood on there. The next thing he done was he cut that bullock up in pieces. And he was careful to get the bullock in its place where it was supposed to be on the wood. What are you getting at, preacher? We need order in our churches. Amen. We need thing, things done decently and in order. Amen. We've got everything but that in most churches today. Right. You got this little handful thinks they're supposed to run it. Yeah. This little handful thinks they're supposed to run it. And the devil running up and down yeah. between them. Uh, and ain't nothing but uh, turmoil, fussing and fighting yeah. going on. And God can't work where that's happening. That's right. You're welcome. Amen. 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 You've got some that's going to find fault in everything you do. Don't matter what you do. Preacher, what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that. It ain't of God. That's what's wrong with it. Let me tell you something. This church needs to be in one mind and one accord. What we do, we need to do as a church. We need to pray about everything we do. And when we, after we prayed about it and God leads us to do it, then we need to get up as one body in Christ, crying the same words and do it all together. We need to be in order. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. All right. So we put everything in order on the fire. Then I want you to notice what he done. He poured water. And this is where I got my text. He dug a trench around that thing. And he poured water. Listen to that. Not one time. He told him, said, I, I said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. He said, I want you to get four barrels of water. Remember that number. Four. And he said, I want you to pour them over the altar. Then he said, do it again. Then he said, do it again. You know how much that, how many barrels of water he had? Twelve. One for each trap. There he was again saying, hey, I want to include y'all. I don't want nobody left out. Even in the pouring of the water. Amen. God included everybody. Yeah. Amen. Right. So he poured it over 12 barrels. One for each try. Now I want you to notice the last thing he done. He walked up there to that altar. I believe he just laid his hand up on it. The Bible won't say that, but I believe he laid his hand on that altar and did build. He said, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, hear me this day. Then he said, That they may know. 
thou art God. The true God. The one true God. Yeah. He said, send far down. And brother, it's time to back up in. <laughs> Because the Bible said that fire came from heaven. Yeah. Now I want you to notice what all it burnt up. Yeah. It burnt the sacrifice. Yeah. It burnt the wood. Yeah. It burnt the stones. Yeah. Did you hear me? It burnt the stones. You say, preacher, a stone won't burn. Them did. Yeah. It lapped up the water and the dust around it. He cleaned the whole place out. You talking about house cleaning, God knows how to house clean, don't he? When he goes to burning up rocks, brother, he's doing something. He took it all. What is he saying, preacher? He's saying they ain't a problem you got that he can't have. Amen. They, Amen. <laughs> there is nothing in your life that's too big for God. Amen. Nothing. Amen. We sit around and whine and complain and moan and groan. There is nothing that God can't handle. Amen. Amen. Oh, that America would believe that today. Mm -hmm. We got problems, but we haven't got what God can't handle. Right. That's right. Most of you have problems in your life. I believe if I went around today and I, I, I polled every one of you, every one of you would say, yes, we have problems. We have things that, that's bothering us, things that's hurting us. You ain't got nothing God can't handle. Amen. 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 We need one ingredient that old Elijah had that day. We need some childlike faith in this country to believe that God will do what he said he'd do. Well, and, hey, when you get that ingredient, couple down with the greatest, wonderful, most wonderful God that ever, the only God, the man, the, the one that has his majesty on high, the one that spoke this thing in creation, the one Hey, hallelujah, the one that we can count on, he is God, and we need that faith to believe he'll do what he said he'll do. Amen. 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 What did he say? He said, with a mighty hand, God led Israel out of bondage. He's got a mighty hand today. He's got a hand that can do anything. Like I've told you many times before, he created the heavens and the earth, the fullness thereof. He reached up with his finger and he spent it on axes. And brother, he put the stars and the moon in their places. He didn't just haphazardly throw them out there, but he placed them where they needed to be for time. And he turned it in. And I'm telling you, a God that big, don't tell me he can't handle your little problem. Amen. Amen. Yeah, give him a hand, clap. He deserves it. Amen. He deserves praise in the house of God. What a wonderful God we serve. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with this. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's keeping you from making the right decisions. I don't know what's keeping you from doing what you need to do. But I'll tell you this. It's time to move. It's time to turn it all over to God. It's time to let Him be the Lord in your life. 
not just uh, the Lord when you want him to be, but let him be Lord every moment of every day of your life. Yes. When you do that, problem solved. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've had with our folk today. Lord, I realize this message I may have been scattered, but Lord, uh, you gave us this message, and I believe with all my heart it's your message and it's what we needed to hear today. Help us, God, to have ears to hear. And more than that, have hearts to receive. Help us, Lord, to take the word of God and apply it to our lives. Oh, God, America needs you today. Help us, Lord, to understand that you're the only one that can solve our issues. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen.